Well, hi there, food friends. It's Kevin. Marianne behind the camera. And welcome to Cavalcade of Food. And today, Mayor, we are going to go to one of my favorite spots around here, and that's the Cookbook Library, and take a closer look at community cookbooks. So, Mayor, I wanted to share with our food friends this time around uh, a little bit about community cookbooks. And I know we've spent some time in the cookbook library in the past, but I think it's fun to sort of look at specific kinds of cookbooks, especially since there are so many of them here. And, um, you know, each cookbook is sort of a little bit different. So let's just start with talking about what a community cookbook is. Some people might think of them as what we would call a church cookbook because a lot of them were put out by church groups um, and some of them were put out by schools, PTAs, um, different clubs and organizations. Sometimes a group of people who work together for uh, a big company or a store or something like that. Uh, often they were done as a fundraiser because they would sell them and the proceeds would go back to the church or the charity or whatever it might be. And we see a lot of these, don't we, Mayor, when we're out on Yes, the, we do. When we're out on the sales. And it's, it, it's, it's hard for me to resist them when I see them uh, because there are so many great recipes. People say, all, what do you need all these cookbooks for? Be you can just... Google the recipe, and you know that's true. I mean, you could Google um, spaghetti sauce, and I bet you you would get 10,000 recipes that would come up for spaghetti sauce. I get that. But it's but, more fun looking in a cookbook. It is more fun looking in a cookbook, and I will tell you that most of the recipes in this library you're not going to find online. They just, they didn't transition over, okay? And so the only place you're going to find them is here. So this started a long time ago in the, um, you know, even back in the, the 19th century, people, mostly women, would have recipe exchanges where they would just get together a small group and they would share recipes for each other bread and different you know dishes for vegetables and meats and things like that and they would share their techniques and their recipes with their friends and neighbors uh, then later in the in the late 19th century and early 20th century as printing became uh, less costly and people could um, uh, associate more freely in different types of groups and people realize that hey we got a bunch of good books we have a great group of cooks in our church or in our cl our club whatever it might be we should we should do a recipe book and there were actually companies some are self-published where they actually typed out all the recipes and they had them printed or they had them mimeographed and then they bound uh, the pages together themselves. But at some point, different companies came up that would do all that work for you. So your job as in the club or in the church would be to gather the recipes and then a company would typeset them, type them up and print them and bind them and all of that and then you'd of course, you'd pay for those, and then, you know, maybe it cost you $2 a book to print, but then maybe you'd sell them for, for $4 or something like that um, to people. So it was a good fundraiser, and they kind of have fallen out of popularity, but do you know they've sort of came back a little bit during the pandemic? People started sharing recipes again. And a lot of them were doing it digitally, which we can do now, obviously. We can do it all online without the need of printing things. 
But yeah, there's actually was a little resurgence in the idea of a community cookbook. One of these days, Mary Ann, mark my word, we're going to do, I think it would be fun to do a cavalcade of food, Food Friends Community Cookbook. And our food friends out there can submit recipes and we'll put them all together and do a cookbook along with some of the favorites from Cavalcade. Wouldn't that be fun? Yes, it would. Um, but that's a project for another day. But I wanted to just share, and this is just a, what you see here is just a sampling. I mean, a small sampling. I have hundreds and hundreds of these community cookbooks. But I'm going to start over here with these two stacks because these are all from churches. Um, and some of them are, here's one, and not all of them are dated, but some of them are. Here's the Eucharistic Mission Band cookbook, 1945. And here's the thing, food friends, when you, um, when you look at recipes in these books, you can be pretty sure that they're good. Because if you are a member of a group, a club, a church, you certainly wouldn't want to submit a recipe that wasn't good. You would submit your specialty dish or something perhaps that you made many, many times and always got rave reviews. Um, and so a lot of these recipes were really some of the best ones that these individuals had to share because, oh my gosh, the embarrassment of submitting a recipe that everybody who made it, it came out terrible. You wouldn't want that. Um, I love in these cookbooks too. Now you know that this group was from Detroit because in here is a typewritten three by five card for Saunders frosting. So those of us who grew up in Detroit remember Saunders. They're still around actually, but um, at one time they were a very large local confectionery company that made candy and cakes and ice cream and yummy things. Um, so I'll have to, this, we might have to make that here. Uh, but anyway, so here's one from 1945. Just to, to let you know how far back some of them go. Here's the Ladies' Aid Society, the Redford Lutheran Church. <clears throat> um, this is in Detroit, Michigan. Not sure when this is from, but I love how uh, it has little advertisements for local businesses, none of whom uh, I believe are still around. But um, uh, this looks to go back to the 1930s. So you know, here's the number for the Farmington Dairy Mayor. The, the phone number is 135. So you know it's pretty old, right? Hey. When, they, when you have a three-digit telephone number uh, in Detroit. And a lot, most of my books are from Michigan um, because that's where we are. And the sales that I've gone to over the last 30, 40 years have all been around the Detroit area or in other parts of the Thumb or other parts of the state. And so a lot of these are reflective of clubs from um, this area. Here's one from 1953 from the First Methodist Church of Dearborn. Uh, and so here's one, 1950, St. Scholastica Parish, uh, 1972. Um, oh, this is a good one. The Mothers and Teachers Association St. Ladislaw School in Hamtramck. Talk about some good old Polish recipes, believe me. Okay, you got Bush's mm -hmm. recipe in here for pierogi. Uh, and I go to these books a lot, folks, when I'm trying to come up with recipes to make for cavalcade. Um, St. Sabina, uh, let's see. Oh, um, favorite recipes of Episcopal church women. How's that? Okay. Like this one, from borscht to blueberry pie. And I love the artwork on some of these because the artwork was done often by people in the organization or kids or something. They're really great. But this is um, from the Ladies' Altar Guild of the Holy Ghost Russian Orthodox Church 
in Detroit, Michigan. So you've got some good Russian Slavic recipes in here. So basically it's from soup to dessert. Exactly, yes. And all the courses. St. Paul Lutheran Church in Port Huron. Um, St. Cletus. Anyway, so these are all wonderful books going through the years of um, from churches. Then you've got some that are were associated with schools um, or other civic groups. So here's one from the Elks Club in Lansing, mm -hmm. Michigan. And here is favorite PTA recipes. Uh, now this is from Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. Not sure where I came across this. But you know, it's so funny because a lot of times when we travel, uh, we might be in some town and someone's selling a cookbook and it, it's what a great souvenir to pick up because not only are there great home cooking recipes in these books but Marianne these books really set a picture of a time and a group of people so you know you get the idea that okay this is published in 1970 here's what people were eating here's what these people liked uh, these were kind of popular recipes Hospitals was another great source for community cookbooks. And you know, in any hospital, you have so many people who work there, not just the doctors and the nurses, but all the administrative staff and custodial staff and maintenance staff. And you know, it takes a lot of people to run a hospital. And uh, here's one, the Deckerville Community Hospital. That's a little town here in Michigan. And the Norman Municipal Hospital Auxiliary. So that's from their volunteers. Here I've got ones from Michigan State Grange, prize-winning recipes. Uh, and I love how these are, you can just see these are all typewritten. Port Sanilac Fire Department. Oh, here's another good one I go to over. You can see, look how it's rubber banded together. That's how much, you know this has got a few miles on it, right? So this is the Polish Legion of American Veterans 50th anniversary cookbook 1932 to 1982 ladies auxiliary and um, talk about talk about you know Bush's recipes they're in there uh, also a lot of radio and television stations put out community cookbooks from their listeners and uh, there were a lot of shows on the air where people would call in with recipes or they'd say you know I'm looking for a recipe for a German chocolate cake or when I was a kid 40 years ago there was a bakery in the neighborhood that made the most wonderful cheese bread and I does anyone have that recipe so here's one from um, local up here WMIC, which is out of Sandusky, Michigan, uh, from the Cookery Corner, which was a feature on the radio station. I like this one, The Happy Cooker. Uh, this is Recipes is Heard on WRNY, Rome, New York, from uh, Norma the Cook, who apparently had a show. And those of us who grew up in Detroit, uh, my friend, the late, great Bob Allison, he had a show for, I want to say, almost 50 years called on the radio. called uh, He did Bowling for Dollars, too, didn't he, Mary? Yeah. <laughs> on TV. But he had a radio show called Ask Your Neighbor. And people would call in all the time offering recipes or looking for recipes. And that was here. These are This is when he was on WWJ. Uh, 9.50 a.m. and these he, he would put out a cookbook every I don't know if it was once a year or a uh, couple times a year with the Collins. Some cookbooks are just family recipes. Here's one from Vivian's Pantry Party Pantry um, and some woman named Vivian published her own cookbook so she had a lot of good recipes to share. Here's one the Cook Family Cookbook, Frank and Bernice Kucharczyk. 
Well, oh yeah, you can just see Polish galore in there. Um, here's one, tried and true recipes from the kitchen of Ella Loveday from Crossville, Tennessee. Uh, a lot of good recipes in there. Then you had ladies, uh, women's clubs. So here's the Ann Arbor Women's City Club. Here is the Detroit Women's City Club. The Cordell Women's Club from Cordell, Georgia. Some good, and I love, look at this, Mayor. They didn't even type it out. These are handwritten and and printed just from the handwritten notes. They didn't even type them out. They're all handwritten. I mean, it's printed, but that's, they didn't even, I love that. Women's City Club of Detroit, another great book. Uh, oh, we can't forget our seniors. Senior Citizens Club of East Detroit, the Barrington Senior Club of Barrington, Michigan, um, here's the 10th annual Senior Power, which was a political group of senior citizens, Power Day book. Now, some community cookbooks are quite renowned, and here's probably one of the most famous one. I actually think they're up to volume three or four now, but these are the River Road recipe books, and this is published by the Junior League of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Um, and I love how so many of these have <laughs> inscriptions. It says, Dear Father, happy birthday to the world's greatest dad. I love you, your daughter Marlene. P.S. All the locals say, this is the Bible of Cajun cookery. Hope you like it. So that was, she had a gift for her dad, and that's I love to see these little notes in here. Um, so great Southern cooking. Here is the Junior League of Nashville, Tennessee. And here's one, Merrill, more of a local, the Junior League of Lansing, Michigan. So the Junior League was a great place uh, to go to for um, community cookbooks. And then you had just towns, uh, people in small towns who would uh, have people submit uh, as part of a community project a recipe. Nuego, Michigan, the Chamber of Commerce put that out, Water Village. Here's one, Stanley County, which is in North Carolina. They had a celebration cookbook for their 150 years of the county and they had residents of the county um, cheddar potatoes. Oh my gosh, does that sound good. Uh, my gosh, never fail. Caramel icing. Uh, chocolate pie. Lemon chest pie. So you want some good North Carolina recipes, you go here. Uh, what is this? Oh, a collection of treasured recipes from the Pine Tree State, from the state of Maine. In case you didn't know it was the pine tree state and uh, of course a lot of seafood but a lot of other wonderful things in here and what else oh here's an old one I love this from coiffures to cooking so you know what that coiffure is Mir? it's a hairdo that's French so this is published by the Mayfield unit 270 National Hairdressers and Cosmetologists Association, December 1955. So this was the hairdresser and cosmetology, I, don't, I guess it was a union, uh, and they put out a cookbook. I'll bet you there's some goodies in there. Lots more. Here's one from the employees of the Dayton Hudson Department Store chain, which of course we had Hudson's here in Detroit. Dayton's was based in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, I think it's all Macy's now, but back when it was Dayton Hudson, these are all employees of the Dayton Hudson company. Here's one from Sperry's department store, 
which was the department store in Port Huron, Michigan. It's now a movie mm -hmm. theater, actually. It's no longer a department store, but um, employees of Sperry's. And then you had groups like the Plymouth Symphony League. Uh, so the musicians and people who volunteered there put out a cookbook. These are just some examples, but when we're talking about cooking and cooking's impact on our culture, all cookbooks give a little bit of a hint, but the community cookbooks really flush it out more because they are coming from a specific place and a specific group of people in a specific time. And like I said, no one, I don't think, ever wants to submit a bad recipe or a recipe they're not real confident in uh, when a cookbook is being assembled. You want, you, want to give you, you want to give the editor of that cookbook your hits, the, the, the best ones. Um, you know, some people are, I never understood, some people are a little hesitant to share their recipes. I've never been. Um, because I figure if someone's willing to do the work and make something, they should have the, the same recipe that I use. Um, but all these recipes shared, literally, there's hundreds of thousands of recipes in these books um, of every type. And to me, these are like the people's cookbooks. These are really records of the kind of foods that people eat and celebrate with, uh, whether it was a PTA or a school or a church or um, a club of some sort, uh, but um, they're wonderful. So just one little section of the cookbook library here uh, that we don't uh, we donate to community cookbooks and uh, perhaps you've got a few on your cookbook shelf that maybe you got or um, a relative of yours had and handed it down to you that was from a group you know what dust it off and just go through it I stay up at night and I read these things cover to cover and you don't know how many recipes I pulled out of them uh, so I think you'll be you'll 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 be surprised how many wonderful um, and unique recipes are in here, or variations of things that you might make yourself. And it's always nice to see another take on it. So, just wanted to share these community cookbooks with you. Encourage you to use ones that you might have in your own cookbook library, or. When you're out at the rummage sales and estate sales, uh, you'll often see them. And uh, give them a look and go through. And to me, if you see one or two recipes in there that you'd like to, you'd like to make, then there's probably a lot more. And it'd be worth, uh, you know, 50 cents or a dollar or whatever they are to pick one up and um, try it. Because you won't find a lot of these recipes online. We hope everybody is well. We hope everybody's enjoying summer. We are starting to transition here to life as it was before the pandemic. For me, that means I am not going to be working remotely, but I'm going to be working in my office physically. So a silver lining was when I wasn't driving in to downtown Detroit every day to work, I could work from here and I could make more videos. But now I'm going to be back at work, which I'm looking forward to. I, I miss the people I work with. I miss the students. And, um, but I probably will be posting less frequently because I won't have as much time here to do that. But we'll do the best we can. Anyways, you know we appreciate that you watch. And if you like what we do here, please subscribe, share, and like. Mary Ann, thanks, sister, for working that camera. You're welcome. And we'll see our food friends again real soon right here on Cavalcade of Food. Bye, everybody. Bye.